Okay, so we're on the hunt for information that can teach us about how the Intel privilege rings work, and we said we have to do a bit of a detour through segmentation. So what is segmentation? Segmentation provides a mechanism for dividing the processor's addressable memory space, called the linear address space, into smaller protected address spaces called segments. So we're going to be talking about linear address spaces, and we're going to be talking about segments. And you could have segmentation being all super complicated like this, where you've got you know this segment and that segment, and they're all just little chunks of the linear address space, but nobody actually does things that way. You could have a less complicated version where you've got you know one segment for code, one segment for data, one segment for stack, and then you know three extra segments, limitations based on how many segment registers you have. But nobody does it that way either. This is closer to the way people do it, but not exactly. And you could have a basic flat model where the linear address space is just one giant flat memory space. This picture implying that it was only four gigabytes, but in 64-bit systems, that would be a much larger space. So segment addressing is something that is fundamental and required for Intel hardware, even though most people don't know about it. And it's the kind of thing that like operating systems, people just set up and then kind of forget. So segment addressing is that you're going to use what's called a logical address, also known as a far pointer, as your starting point. So you start with a logical address, and from there you're trying to get to a physical address. And the physical address space is defined as the range of addresses that the processor can generate on its address bus. So that means address bus is the thing going out to RAM, for instance. And so it's saying, you start with a logical address, you're going to need to convert it to something called a linear address, which is what we were just talking about. And that's treated as this 64-bit address space. And from that 64-bit address space, you're going to find some specific address in the physical range. So we said logical addresses, which is where we start, is also known as a far pointer. So just to show you in 32-bit systems, we normally think of pointers as just some 32-bit value. So what is a far pointer then? A far pointer is a 32-bit value with a segment selector put on the front of it. So that is a 16-bit value. So similarly, in 64-bit, we have some notion of pointers and far pointers. There's actually three forms of a far, far pointer here for 64-bit, but to make things simple, we're just going to ignore those latter two. So we're going to think of it like a near pointer. The pointer that you all know and love is just some 64-bit value. And a far pointer is the 64-bit value having a prefix of this 16-bit segment selector, basically saying, I want this particular segment as specified by a segment selector, and this particular offset as specified by the 64-bit value that you normally think of as a pointer. So once again, restating what kind of address spaces we're dealing with here. We've got logical addresses, which are far pointers, saying I want this segment and that offset which gets turned into a particular linear address space somewhere in the 64-bit or 32-bit on old systems uh, range of addresses. That can then get translated into a virtual address, and that is something where it takes paging into account, and then that further goes to a physical address, which is the actual location in RAM that gets sent out for lookup in the physical hardware. Now, we're going to pretend that there's no such thing as paging right now. We're just going to pretend it's disabled until we learn about it later. And in reality, when the processor starts up in real mode, when we, we talked about before the different uh, execution modes of an Intel processor, when it starts in real mode, there is no paging. There is no even support for paging. You don't get that support until you get into uh, protected mode. So really, at the very beginning of code execution, You've got logical addresses, you've got some notional linear address space, and you've got physical addresses. So that's what we're going to do for now. We're going to just assume, well, when you get to a linear address, just treat it like it's going to be exactly the same physical address. So shown slightly differently, we have segmentation translating logical addresses, a far pointer, a segment selector, and a offset into linear addresses. So how does it do this? It does this through some sort of table lookup. And so we set a segment selector, basically says what segment you want to use. That is going to be selecting out of some sort of table that has a description of the segment. And it's going to use that description to find where the base of the segment is. And it's going to add this offset to the base to get a linear address. So logical address, far pointer, 64-bit value plus a 16-bit segment selector, 
translated through a table to a linear address somewhere in the 64-bit address space. Same exact picture, just a slightly bigger version of it. So what do we have? We have a logical address, a segment selector, and an offset translated through some sort of table, gives you a linear address, and then now we're saying paging is disabled, so I've just hidden it from you. And so we say when there's no paging, a linear address maps directly one-to-one -to, -one to a physical address, and that's your actual RAM. So this is all about translating these logical addresses all the way through to physical RAM addresses where you find the data. Now, here is what the manual says about x86-64. And what it really comes down to is that uh, people were never using segmentation to its full potential in 32-bit systems. And so when AMD made the x86-64 extensions, they more or less disabled segmentation, uh, but they kept some particular exceptional cases. So what it says is in 64-bit mode, segmentation is generally, but not completely disabled. It creates a flat 64-bit linear address space, and the processor treats the segment base of the CS, DS, ES, and SS as zero. So it basically means there's gonna be these registers, we'll talk about it in a second, but anytime you're using these registers, the hardware basically says, I don't care what all that table lookup junk says, I'm just gonna say the base address is zero. So if you know a logical address is segment selector plus an offset, and it's finding some base, and it's adding the offset to the base, all that doesn't matter. It's just saying, you know what? Treat the base as zero. So zero plus whatever the 64-bit offset is. So effectively, it's you know a no-op. It it does nothing, and it just treats the 64-bit value like a 64-bit value. But the exceptions are FS and GS segments. So basically, these particular segment registers and the usage of them are going to continue to function like they did on 32-bit, and they're going to use table lookups, and they're going to uh, use the segments based on that. So the point is, you know, nobody ever used it like this. Nobody ever used it like this. People didn't even really use it like this. Close, but no cigar. The way people actually used it in operating systems, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, uh, what they did typically is that, you know, CS, SS, these, these first segments, they would tend to be set to some completely flat, cover the entire linear address space, uh, segment. So they'd make one giant segment for all of 2 to the 32 or all of 2 to the 64-bit linear address space, and they'd just point these registers at a big flat segment. But different operating systems would use these FS and GS to point at some sort of operating system specific register, uh, sorry, data structure. So basically when AMD was doing the 64-bit extensions, they said, well, we don't want to break everybody who's using this particular register to point at some data structure, so we'll leave that alone. And we don't want to break people who are using this particular register to point at some particular data structure, so we'll leave that alone. So that was kind of uh, just codifying what everybody already did into the actual behavior of the hardware. So we said segmentation is about translating logical addresses to linear addresses to physical addresses. And we said logical addresses are far pointers, and far pointers are a 16-bit segment selector plus some offset. And so what is that 16-bit segment selector? What exactly is in there? Well, that 16-bit segment selector is basically a data structure with three fields, a thing called RPL, request and privilege level, a thing called table indicator, and a thing called index. So segment selector is basically going to be looking up or selecting some segment from some table. There's two tables, and we're going to learn more about them later, so I'm leaving the details out for now. There's a global descriptor table, and there's a local descriptor table. This index is going to be indexing into these two tables, and these tables are tables of data structures that describe segments, chunks of memory. So, oh, and the last point was, you know, because this is a 13-bit index, that means there can be, you know, 8,000 particular data structures in each of these tables. But the interesting thing about this segment selector is this two-bit RPL, requested privilege level. So privilege level sounds suspiciously like rings. So let's you know keep that in mind for a little bit. We'll come back to it. So there are six segment registers on Intel processors. And each of those segment registers holds a 16-bit segment selector. So the register looks like a 16-bit register, and it holds that data structure, that 16-bit data structure we just saw. 
And so the notional naming convention here was CS for the code segment. So it would have a segment selector. That segment selector would point at a table. The table would say, here is the chunk of linear address space that corresponds to the code segment. So code segment, stack segment, data segment, extra segment, EFG were all just sort of extra data segments that people could potentially use, but I said they never actually did. So back to the very beginning, the introduction, we said, you know, here's some extra stuff that we're going to introduce in this class. You've already seen all these, you know, general purpose registers, but now we are seeing these segment registers. There are six 16-bit segment registers. And address space, you know, we were talking about linear address space is this nominal 2 to the 64-bit space, uh, which, you know, is how we access memory. So we're going to be covering a ton about a linear address space and all the various translations here. So briefly, like how do you actually set to these segment registers, CS, DS, SS, etc.? Well, there are move instructions, and if you want to find this in the manual, they are just under the normal move. So amongst the many different forms of move are these segment register uh, things moving, you know, from an RM16 to a segment register and from segment register to an RM16. There are also push and pop versions of these where you can push the various segment registers onto the stack and then you can pop values back on. Although I would note that there is no pop CS type of uh, pop instruction. And again, these pops and pushes are just things that you will find in the normal push and pop manual page. All right, now there's an interesting thing about segment selectors. We normally talk about these segment registers as if they are, uh, sorry, I said there's an interesting thing about segment selectors. I meant there's an interesting thing about segment registers. We normally talk about these registers as if they're just 16-bit values that hold a segment uh, selector. But in reality, there's a visible part and then there's a hidden part. And essentially this hidden part is going to be a cache of information from those lookup tables uh, that gets stuffed back in here. So you can never actually directly access the hidden part. All you can do is change the visible part to point to a different entry in some table to then fill in these hidden parts. So let's see, you know, how exactly that works. So the six segment selectors have the visible part and the hidden part, but we said AMD's x86-64 extensions say, you know what, CS, SS, DS, ES, those are always going to go ahead and treat the segment that they're pointing at as if it had a base of zero and a limit of two to the 64 minus one. So that's actually, you know, included in this hard code in this hidden part. So these values for like the base that this thing points at or the limit, the size effectively of the segment that it points at, these are never actually going to be filled in from the table for CS, SS, DS, and ES. They're always just hard coded. And that's why, you know, we say that for a large part of the functionality on 64-bit systems, these segment, uh, segment mechanism is disabled because these are now hard coded. And we said FS and GS are not hard coded. Those still behave the way that things used to where these cast in, cached information comes from the tables. So let's look at that further. So if we look at the visible portion of the CS register, the segment selector, and we say, you know, let's go ahead and parse that. It's got an RPL, a TI, and an index. If the TI happens to be set to zero, then according to this, the table indicator of zero means it's going to point at a table called the GDT that we'll learn about in the next section. So it points at some table of data structures and the index, you know, let's say that it points at three. It's going to just be selecting some particular data structure within that. And that's supposed to say like this data structure says like, where is the memory for uh, the code segment? But now here in 64-bit land, it's not really taking a base or a limit from there, it's just always assuming zero. But the thing that is taken from these tables is access information, it's effectively permissions information, saying, you know, who is allowed to access this memory for this particular code segment? Is the kernel allowed to? Is user space allowed to? Hint, hint. Uh, and so this is information that gets filled into the hidden portion. If we instead looked at you know, a different segment register, the FS register, we said that one is not just hard-coded to always treat everything like zero base and 64-bit limit. 
So if that table indicator just happened to be set to one, that would then be pointing at the different data structure table, the LDT. And let's say the index was one out of that, then it would just be selecting some data structure and the information from that data structure would go into the hidden part of the FS register. So just sort of different behavior for those CS, ES, SS, DS. They don't accept the basin limit from the tables. They only have access control information and FS and GS do still fill in all the information from the table. That's again a reason why we say that segmentation is not optional. It is still used, uh, but, but it's used in a much more limited form than what the, it was originally designed for. All right, well, Summick has an hypothesis, and that is that if the RPL has something to do with privilege rings, as it sort of suggests, then it should be different when we're reading segment selectors out of segment registers in kernel versus user space. So how would we test this hypothesis? Well, we need to go read segment selectors in kernel versus user space. 